Hello everyone, I am Tanner151, comrade of YouTube. I'm just kidding guys, hey, I'm Tanner151 and this is my review of the game Metro Last Light. Now let's talk about it. Metro Last Light is developed by 4A Games, they're based in Kiev, Ukraine, and they have made this game on the 4A engine, which is similar to the Stalker engine, Stalker of Chernobyl, or Chernobyl Stalker, whichever one that is. A game came out a couple years ago on the PC. Now this game is a sequel to Metro 2033, which is a book actually, and there's a sequel book called Metro 2034, which this is pretty much taking place in. Now, the game takes place in a post-apocalyptic Moscow and the subway system generally. You do go to the surface occasionally, and I have to say, this game is a lot of fun. You play as a guy named Artyom, who's part of the Order, or Sparta. He's pretty much like a police officer who is trying to keep peace within the metro as a whole but it doesn't do that great of a job now Artyom is special because he has a connection to these creatures called dark ones which are they're, they're, they're not human or alien they're just like mutated creatures that have psychic powers and you're the only one that can really communicate with them in the first game you killed what you thought were all of them in the second game it's a huge plot thing so I won't go into it now here's something very uh, strange you have to if you get the unlimited edition of the game like I did because I got it in the first generation of games that came out you have to download ranger mode and ranger mode is less ammo enemies are a little more intelligent etc and I haven't played this I played this on normal mode see there's an easy normal hardcore then there's ranger which is easy normal hardcore on ranger and it's just stupid that they had to make a, a game mode a downloadable content that's stupid now our team will have these hallucinations due to the dark one especially when he's like later on in the game where you're going further out from the metro you're visiting the surface you have these strange hallucinations and you'll think you're like in the past again like as a child like as he is here and it's very uh... It, it's very like it fits the atmosphere this game really puts you in the atmosphere of the game it is magnificent magnificent how they did it these guys I think they're called watchmen but these are like the harder versions of them they suck do not let them get near you individually they're not that hard but when three or four of them are after you and they're clawing at you so quickly it sucks now in the game there are many kinds of weapons there's like the AK-47 there's some shotguns and a sniper rifle bolt-action rifle and a lot of them are like made up weapons that, that look really cool and I really like them now even though this game at first I was like this game's graphics aren't that great but once I hit the surface and I saw how beautiful it was like within an hour or 30 minutes of getting the game I saw how beautiful it was, I was like whoa this game actually looks really good on the surface but I don't think it'll look that good for anymore uh, down in the metro I was wrong because when I get back down in the metro it starts looking really really good Facial animations, those kind of suffer, but I won't say that's a bad thing on 4A games because they're based in Kiev, Ukraine, and nearly everyone that works on it is Ukrainian or Russian or whatever. So English is not their natural language. So for them to be able to sync it and everything, that would be difficult for them. So I give them credit for doing as good as they did. Now in the game, you get to fight mutants, Nazis, communists, various other things, and... It, it's an adventure like you f start fighting the Nazis then you fight mutants throughout the game then you fight communists and it's actually just really cool like how different these factions are and not just like how they interact with people because both sides kill people mass murderly Nazis do it based on genetically impure or you're a mutant or suspected mutation the communists shoot them if you're not a revolutionary brother so that is interesting but the the side conversations in this game let me get to that the side conversations as you'll see later are a huge thing in this game do not just walk through this game take your time listen to people as as you're walking by listen to their interactions because not only will it reveal a little more of the story occasionally but it really gets you immersed in the world they did a lot of little things right in this game and i'm really happy that they did it really fits the atmosphere of you're in a environment a place where there's really no hope. 
Now, when you're on the surface, you have to have a gas mask. And in the gas mask, you have to have these air canisters. And see that watch there? That watch is each canister has like five minutes. So every canister you pick up, it adds minutes to your overall time. And once it runs low, you got to switch your canisters. Now, early on and in the middle of the game, they're pretty rare because you don't go to the surface that much. But towards the end of the game where you go to the surface more, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Like the last three missions on the surface, they're everywhere. Which is good, thank God. Now, I played on normal, so ammo wasn't a problem until the middle of the game when I was on the surface. Because there were no human enemies like in the middle of the game. So I couldn't pick up ammo from them. I had to fight off a lot of mutants, and it, it was difficult. So stealth, which is a, which is in this game, you might want to do stealth more often than I did. Now there are these diaries in the game, which are just RTM writing stuff down. And here's the thing: RTM talks during the cutscenes, but he doesn't talk in the game, which I find weird. Like, the voice actor's not bad, I mean, it could be a pretty good situation. Don't make him like a blabbermouth like some characters in games. Make him kind of like a, a Master Chief from Halo 1. Have him talk very rarely. So, like, when they're like, Artyom, are you right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Or something like that. Just occasionally talking, or have him interact more with non-playable characters. Especially when you see those side conversations. If you could interact with them... That would be awesome. Like, hold X to interact and talk to him. That would be a really cool idea. I like that. Now, there were two creatures that I had immense problems with throughout the game. One of them was in the middle, which was difficult, and I had very little ammo when I finished. And this guy. Well, actually, it's a mother. This one was really hard because it took so much ammo. I thought I had a lot of ammo. No. And these are the thing about the boss battles in these games when they're against mutants. When you're fighting mutant bosses, you'll be in an area which is secluded, broken off from other areas, with either little to no ammo in there. Like, I was almost out of ammo. I had to look around looking for a weapon, and I found a shotgun with like six shots in it. I was like, are you serious? And that, But I did get through it, eventually. But they need to like, add some more health or ammo. Mainly ammo. Like, health wasn't really a problem, even though the thing would charge you. Now, the story in general, it's pretty consistent. There are some issues, like, kind of like, okay, that was a complete 180, or that's kind of weird. Like, Anna, who is the girl that you meet at the beginning of the game, she gives you the cold shoulder until about two-thirds through the game. Then she's like, your girlfriend, and like, whoa, where, where did this happen? I didn't even see it. They kind of forced a love story in there. I don't really know why. The... The game has a great presentation, especially at the beginning. Just watch the intro on YouTube. Great presentation. I got it. Got me interested. The there is like a heavy feeling though with your weapons and like how you move. Like you feel very heavy. Like I had to move my sensitivity to almost all the way up just for me to be able to move around without being annoyed about how slow I am. So there is a sensitivity heavy issue. I, I don't really really know what or n really know why. The characters in the game are pretty good, and as I said, do not run through this game. Like, look at this. If I would, like, walk right by this, I would not have even realized. See, the Metro is brutal. There are brutal things happening in this game. It's not like a nice, oh, you're, you'll be fine. No, they shoot people constantly, even good guys, for the better of the Metro. Now, here is an example of a side conversation, and it's just really good how, how well these are done. Human AI, like the enemy, it's it's not all that good. Um, it's kind of dumb. Because you'll shoot someone, and if there's a guy right next to him, he, he won't hear the bullet go off. He won't hear the body fall, if you have a silencer. But, and he'll turn around, and he won't look at it. Unless his flashlight, or he looks down, sees it, he's like, Oh, la, ring the alarm! So it's like, okay, so you didn't hear anything else? I don't know, it's... The human AI is a little inconsistent, but they are easier to fight than the mutants, I will say that. I mean, humans might have weapons, but the mutants, ugh, I don't know, I had problems with them, especially the demons, the flying creature right there, those things were a pain in the butt. Now, there is a really cool language option that I thought was pretty interesting. 
you can have you can select what language you want to hear the game in. I started it off in Russian but quickly switched back to English. You can have subtitles in any language you want. I had mine in English the entire time. And then you can have text. Like if you picked up diaries or something, you can have that in a language. I think I left I think I had that in English also. Or maybe I left in Russian because everything like all the signs are in Russian except the diary notes. I'm not really sure. Maybe it was just the diary notes. I'm not sure. But this game, overall, even though there is no multiplayer, but I think that's a good thing, because if there was multiplayer in this game, I think it would have taken away from the campaign. And I'm going to say, I'm going to give this game an 8 out of 10. It is a very good game. Is it a great game? No. Is it a intense multiplayer game? No. Is it an intense campaign mode with a good story, with a good ending? There's supposed to be two endings. With a good ending and consistency all the way through? Yes. So Metro Last Light gets an 8 out of 10 in my book. I suggest you guys go buy it. Alright. Talk to you later, guys.